Hello YouTube. Wanted to make another short video today. Uh, just listen to a great interview uh, on CNBC with the uh, commodity uh, commodities expert for Goldman Sachs, Jeff Curry, and he's discussing why he sees oil going to eighty dollars a barrel in the near future. Let's say for the rest of the year, or by year's end, maybe. And why he also sees gold going back to 2000 and possibly higher, and what the connection is between oil and gold. So take a listen to this interview, and um, I'll probably stop it a few times and maybe uh, just make a few comments as it goes. Snapping a seven day losing streak, its longest uh, since 2019. Joining us uh, is Jeff Curry, Global Head of Commodities Research at Goldman Sachs. Uh, Jeff, great to see you as always. Thanks uh, so much for, for joining us. I guess uh, uh, put to their side, in the short term, clearly we've seen quite a lot of weakness in oil and, and commodities as a whole. Why was, why was that? Why did we see that weakness? Well, there was a lot of concerns around the macro backdrop. You had you know, China concerns, um, you had Delta variant concerns. Um, and then you had the reflation trade unwind. Um, this caused new short standard of the market, which shifted the trend downwards. CTAs ran it sharply. Um, bottom line, it massively overshot fundamentals, because if you look at the micro fundamentals of this market, they're tied across all of these different markets. They're still in a deficit. Even oil, where you had demand come off, and particularly China because of the Delta variant with lockdowns, you know, you had demand, it came down, but the demand level was still above the supply level and you're drawing inventory. So now as demand goes up, you have critically low inventories, China re-enters the market, you draw the inventories in the West of both oil and metals. Um, that's what we think is going to be the catalyst to send us back up to 80. Um, so let's uh, take that for a minute there. So what he's saying is, um, you know, oil got up to about $75 a barrel and um, and then it pulled back. It had a, a couple of weeks of a losing streak where oil went way down. And that was because there was this fear with the uh, COVID, uh, the resurgence of COVID and some sort of evidence that it seemed like uh, activity was slowing down that uh, you know, the, the oil's futures prices were going down because now people were worried, oh, you know what, there's gonna be less demand. Also, OPEC said they're gonna produce more. So you had all these factors. There's gonna be more oil produced. There's gonna be less demand for it. Therefore, it started going down. And what Curry here is saying is, well, even, even through all of that, the demand was still outstripping the supply. So now the supply, is low and demand is picking up again and when it does pick up again the price is going to have to go way up because now there's even less supply than there was before so um that's oil so he sees oil going back up to 80 possibly more so let's uh let's pick it up from there you know, we have 17 percent returns expected from now going into year end so, so is that it in terms of uh, the turnaround for oil today with the 5% jump? Is it, is it higher from here until we hit those targets of yours towards 80? Well, I, I want to be really careful. The liquidity is very low in these markets. You know, you, you, know, you had equally large down moves as you know, the up move today. Um, you know, that, that's why I always say when you know, we go through these periods, um, you, know, you can't take the position down because you don't know which day it's going to you know, pop back up. Uh, he just made an excellent point there. This is a point I make all the time in the gold market. Um, it it's amazes me when I read the analysis of gold. Um, you know, you go on like Seeking Alpha or something and you read these articles on various gold miners and, and other commodity plays in the market. People will constantly say, oh, you know what, you have to trade them. They go up and they go down and, and they, they jerk around so much you, you have to sell sell it when it goes up and then buy it when it goes down. And what Jeff Curry just said there was he said this market is very, it has a very low level of liquidity. 
So he's saying, in other words, it's very thinly traded. There's not that much activity going on in it right now. And therefore, it's very easy for the price to get to go way up and go way down. And, and he said that he tells his clients, you have to keep your positions on. Why? Because you can get caught out of position. So let's say you, you uh, the, the price goes up one day and so you sell, you know, you take your little gain and you sell. Because the market is thinly traded, it could go way up the next day and then you don't have a position and you miss it. And that's it. You're, you're out. You know, you missed the train. You know, you were... Yeah, you missed the rocket ship. Tough luck. Now you're out and you missed that positive, possible big gain to take a little tiny gain. So this is this is what I always say. I don't try to hop in and out all the time. I'm not saying you can't do that with, you know, some stock stuff. But don't sell your whole, don't get totally out of the market and then miss a huge move up. You know, half the time it'll happen in the middle of the night when the U.S. market isn't even open. Uh, you know, when they're trading in Australia and uh, Europe or whatever, these other places. So that's a point that he made there, which I think is excellent. And we'll pick it up from there. In September, that, hey, these fundamentals are going to prevail, and we end up with much tighter markets. The other thing, too, on the physical side, because people were really concerned, you know, particularly given the pullback going in last week. We had not only liquidation of paper, but we also had liquidation of inventories of both oil and metals, which put further downward pressure on the market. So, you know, now that these fears have subsided, particularly with the news out of China this, this morning, um, you know, we think that that's going to take some of that macro headwind out of the market um, near term. But I want to be a little cautious. Liquidity is very low. But it kind of makes sense, Jeff, that e even if you don't think Fed Chair Powell is going to announce a taper this week at Jackson Hole, we know it's coming. The economy has made substantial progress, so they're going to start scaling back stimulus. That's driven up the dollar. That, that pressure is crude. Why, why do you not think that dynamic will continue? Well, well let's just keep going you know, with it again. Commodity markets are driven by levels. Even the tapering is going to mean that, hey, the liquidity is still going to rise, but just not at the same pace that it was before. And even back to this, it's so critical about commodities is that financial markets are driven by growth rates. Commodities are driven by levels of activity. You know, so take, take oil after the COVID lockdowns in China. The demand growth rate declined. It went down, so financial markets react to that. The supply is down here. So the demand, even though it declined, is still above supply in your dry inventory. So if we take you know, the tapering, you know, the tapering begins, but liquidity is still increasing, you know, putting upward pressure on that demand level, albeit at a slower pace, still is going to keep these markets tight and keep these markets in deficits. All right, so that's another key point. People are talking about this, you know, every time one of these Fed governors comes on CNBC or, or Bloomberg or whatever and says, uh, starts talking about tapering, gold sells off, commodities sell off, uh, you know, the dollar goes up. Uh, these markets are just, uh, you know, it's computer algorithms and stuff like this. People aren't using their brains here. Because what Curry just said there is, Tapering does not mean tightening. It's not the same thing, okay? There's still going to... Tapering just means you slow the rate of liquidity that the Fed is pumping into the market. Liquidity is still going up. And he said that's just going to put further pressure on commodity markets because there's going to be that liquidity equals more activity. And more activity puts upward price pressure on commodities. So there's no reason for gold to be selling off. I mean, gold right now is probably the single best deal in the market. I mean, you know, you could probably put silver there too. But uh, gold and silver, you know, precious metals are way oversold. And he's going to get to gold here in just a minute. So let's pick it up there. Every time you come on, when's it going to rally or fall meaningfully? It's just uh, always around this 1800 level. Well, you know, it was amazing. It, it kept its ground during this during this time period, which, you know, it, there was some defensive nature there. Well, you know, the catalyst, um, I think you have to see people interested in the reflation trade, but the fundamentals, 
The Chinese arbitrage wide open when you look at the Shanghai premium. That means the Chinese are buying um, gold. But also when you look at emerging market central banks, you know, in 2018 it was coming from the, the, the EMs that were under political pressure, like Turkey and Russia. This time it's broad based, which means they're diversifying their portfolio. So the fundamentals really look good. You need that catalyst to move you up to our $2,000 target. Uh, which we think will have to be you know, people getting interested in the inflation trade. What could that be? Oil prices. Oil prices move up to our $80 target or 85 or 90 I think that's going to bring interest back into the inflation trade. All right, so there's the key point. Uh, during this period when there's been some sort of question about is the economy slowing down, is the Fed going to start to taper, you know, um, we've been seeing the dollar go up. We've been seeing bond yields come down. Uh, like, you know, you hear all the de people talking about deflation and deflation would supposedly be bad for gold and commodities and all this sort of stuff. And um, so what Curry said there was two things. He said, first of all, during that whole time period, gold actually held up very well. It's held up right around 1800. It had that one dip that one sell-off um, down to uh, 1675. It just happened on a Sunday night, very briefly, which would be early Monday. It would have been the early Monday morning session over in Asia, uh, and then it bounced right back. I mean, it didn't even stay. It was only down 25 bucks by the end of the day, I think. And now it's it's come back above. Today it's above 1800 again. So it's held up well during this time, and he thinks the catalyst for it to go back up to 2000, test, start testing those highs we had last year in 2020, is going to be if inflation becomes a theme again. And the catalyst for that, he sees, is going to be oil prices. So if we see the oil price go back up, past that high, got up to about 75 before, we see it get back up to 80 and maybe keep going, that could reignite the interest in the, the entire um, inflation hedge commodity complex, if you will. We could see gold setting possibly a new all-time high to uh, surpass last year's high. So um, let's hear, that's basically what I wanted to share today, but let's finish up the interview here. at the 70% fall of lumber prices from the recent highs and some of the other commodities rolling over and saying, see, inflation is going to be transitory, at least at least this commodity inflation. Would, would you argue that? That's true? No, I mean, the, the markets that you can point to, like lumber or iron ore and steel, they're very idiosyncratic reasons for that weakness. So let's take, like, you know, iron ore, you know, in China. One, you had flooding in many of the areas that halted construction. That's going to subside. You'll get that construction activity back again. Um, and, and then when you look at the government, you know, it's locking down on the ability to produce steel uh, due to environmental reasons that have nothing to do with the broader economy. So, you know, you look at what's going on in these markets, we do not believe they're a carry in the coal mine. Jeff, great to see you. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. All right, so that was the final point there, which is actually another uh, good point. As far as in people talking about the inflation being transitory and pointing to things like lumber, used cars, you know, whatever, every time there's another CPI report that comes out, you know, inflation report, the Fed and the media always has their excuse. They're like, oh, yeah, the only reason it's high is because this one thing, because, you know, used car prices were way up. But that's transitory. That's going to change. Or lumber prices were way up this time. And that's going to change. And then maybe a month or two later, lumber comes down. And they're like, see, we told you it was transitory. But as Curry points out, there's specific reasons why those particular markets rolled over there's no indication or evidence that that's going to happen broadly with all commodities. And in fact, he just laid out here why oil is going to do the opposite of that. It's going to get back up. And you're going to see that with a lot of other things. Rents are up double digits over last year, and that has not yet been factored into CPI. Um, and a lot of other things we're going to be seeing uh, 
renewed uh, supply chain shortages due to uh, COVID resurgence in China and Vietnam and these other places where all of our goods are made these days. So anyways, that was the news for today. Look for oil to head back up and hit $80 or higher. And when that happens, or maybe even before at some point, expect to see gold go back up above 2000 all right, we'll catch you guys next time.